All right, I want to explore a few things more when it comes to comments. Now we have our comment up here. Remember, comment, you put the pound symbol here, and anything past that will be ignored by the Python interpreter or the Python app. So what is the point of comments? The most important thing about comments, and we can have multiple lines, is that with comments, you can leave messages behind so that the next coder will know what the code is about. So you don't want to write big, long essays, big, long stories, but it's kind of cool to use comments to just give an idea to the coder what you are trying to do in this code. Now, this could be another coder because when you're working in app development, when you are a programmer, it's very common that you're going to be working with other programmers. So it's kind of cool that you leave notes behind about what you were trying to do with your code. Another reason to leave comments behind is leave comments for you because when you work on your app, you're into it, you're all into the code, you know exactly what you want to do. But what happens six months from now when you have to go back to your Python code to your PY file, and you're gonna to have to make some updates. I can tell you from experience, you're probably gonna forget exactly what you were doing. So by putting some nice comments in your PY files at the right spots, right spots could be at the top of the page, it could be right beside a big chunk of code that's kind of complex. When you put comments behind, it will make it a lot easier for you to go back and pick up what it is you were doing and how you were thinking about your code at the time. So remember, we created variables before. We created name variable. We can give a variable any name we want. We can call it a name. You can do whatever you want. Now, there are special words in Python and these special words are called uh, reserved words. And these are words you can't use in your variable names and other code. And we're gonna get into that later on, but generally speaking, in Python, you can name your variables what you want. Simple rules, you want to use, uh, you want to use letters, it could be uppercase, lowercase. You can use numbers, but it would be best if you, you know, name a variable, name eight. That is a good variable in terms of, it won't break Python, but generally speaking, when you're creating your variables, you want to make sure that your variables tell people or tell coders what the variables are about. So if you're going to be collecting people's names in your app, you want to call your variables names. If they collect, if you're collecting people's last names, don't forget that, it's equals. If you want to collect people's last names, then you might have name last, for example. I'm just putting blank spaces for now, just so I can teach you this stuff. If you're going to keep track of people's ages, you're going to put age. You might have a variable called age right? You might have also somebody's birthday. You might have, call it birthday. So you can see the variables names make sense. They make logical sense. They tell you something about what the code is doing. So that's kind of cool. So let's try something. Let's say we get name, you say it's equal to Michael. Michael. So that's a name. Let's say name Name last equals Corleone. I don't even know if I'm spelling that right. Now, when you are creating variables, it's good to be consistent. So if you're gonna do what I just did, where I put a dash in between a variable uh, words and a variable name, you can't have a space like that. That's not gonna work, that's gonna break. It has to either be a dash, or, excuse me, an underscore. Oops, it could, be, it could be a number, it could be a dash whatever it is you want, whatever is more readable. Some people will do this, excuse me, will do this called camel case. I tend to do this, it would be name underscore last or name dash last. Now, you wanna be consistent in your naming of your variables. So if you're gonna use dashes, underscores rather, or dashes, whatever, in between words and variables, so it might go price underscore product. That makes sense. So you go, eh, and then you say uh, 24 .5, 2456 for the sake of our example here. 
you wouldn't want to use an underscore up here to between variable words and then use maybe a dash here or maybe not use a space at all or maybe do this you want to be consistent so you have to decide at the very beginning what you're going to do so i'm going to just do underscores i just like underscores so we got our three variables here works pretty good so let me just save this document i'm going to function f5 nothing happens because all we did in our code is we just created three variables so let's print out some variables we're going to print and we're going to go say print the name and uh, we just save that then we function f5 again michael comes out now let's print out price underscore product and hit save f5 we get the price of the product okay that's enough for now so we'll jump into some quizzing and in the next video we'll take up from where we left off here